So with that, we move into the microbial biomass activity uh, aspect of our, our uh, presentation here today. So we were observing those yield bumps. Um, Manure was out yielding in many of the sites beyond what, what uh, could be achieved with fertilizer alone. And it made us think a little bit about, is there something in the soil that uh, we can measure that, that is connected to both a nitrogen response potential and uh, the yield bump? So we started a project on soil microbial indicators. This is the research of Kurpreet Kaur, our PhD student uh, in our team. She would have presented the slides here today if she hadn't been in the middle of her A exam. Uh, so I'm presenting the slides on, on our behalf here. The main questions were, can microbial health indicators be used to identify when we can expect a response to nitrogen? So when we have to go inside us and when we don't. Can they be used to identify when to expect a yield increase? And could microbes be the key to building more resiliency in crop response across years? Those are the key questions for Capri's uh, PhD research. We started this uh, with the experiments in 2023. Three out of the eight sites that Juan Carlos uh, was working with, Capri went and did some more intense sampling uh, for some microbial indicators for. The three sites we picked uh, are called field A, B, and C in this slide. The big difference uh, to, to keep in mind with those is field A was one of those fields that showed a tremendous yield bump. It was a field that um, did need nitrogen, showed a yield bump, uh, and had pretty much no manure history. Field B and field C were fields where very small, no yield benefit, no manure uh, benefit to speak of, and both of those fields had longer term manure histories with field C uh, representing a field with a much longer manure history than field B. So we're going from A to B to C, from zero manure history to some manure history to quite intense manure history in field C. The soil types in these fields, even though they were in different parts of the state, were fairly similar. Manure types, um, digested liquids, um, separated liquids for the farm, uh, farm B, different rates, different ways of applying as um, represented in these three fields. What Capri did in this study with our team was basically sample um, two of the nitrogen treatments, the control, the zero, and the max rate for that particular field, and that could vary for both the with and without manure strips. So control and maximum nitrogen application within each strip. So you sampled the manure versus the no manure strip. So you sampled that three times at planting, at pre-side risk nitrogen, at pre-side risk time, and at harvest. And then she took uh, samples over three depths, zero to four inches was for the microbial biomass assessments. Zero to eight for the regular fertility, and zero to 12 was only mid-season for a PSNT. We won't have time to go in all of this, so uh, out of the, the list of things that she's measured, I'm going to present the slides on the ones highlighted in blue here. Loss on ignition carbon, so what farmers typically get reported on their um, sort of fertility analysis from a lab. Active carbon and microbial biomass. Here's the first picture. I'm going to show you uh, these slides for each of those three indicators. This is loss on ignition. We have three fields, field A, B, and C. Sampling at planting, at pre-side rest time, and at harvest. And then in brown is the manure strip, and in gray is the non-manure strip. What we see in this picture is basically not much. Field C tends to be a little higher in loss and ignition, reflecting most likely that longer-term manure history. Everything else looks sort of similar, and we don't see any trends going from at planting to side rest to harvest time either. Very consistent measurements. When we switch over now to active carbon, we have again field A, B, and C at planting, at pre side rest, and at harvest. We see a very, very similar picture. The only thing that stands out is that field C 
it has higher values um, than A and B. And we don't really see a trend over time going from at planting to pre risk or at harvest. So in terms of indicators, these two, loss on ignition and active carbon, um, were not really helping us separate out field A, which was very responsive to nitrogen and showed an enormous yield bump to manure, versus field B and C that did not show much of a response to either nitrogen or manure. We took one more along, building up the story here, microbial biomass. Um, we got in touch with the company that makes what they call the microbiometer. And it's a test kit. Um, we started working with this test kit and analyzing the samples. And we wanted to show you some of the results here. So this is microbial biomass data coming from this test kit. We have field A, field B, and field C. At planting, the thing that jumped out, two things jumped out uh, at us. One was field C was much higher microbial biomass than fields A and B. And field C was also the only field where the manure significantly increased the microbial biomass, suggesting that it needed a starting point, a certain amount of biomass to then be activated by the addition of the manure. These manure applications were all done in the spring uh, before planting. So field C, much higher microbial biomass, and the only field where manure addition increased microbial biomass at planting. At side rest time, we see this. Low numbers for field A, numbers in the middle for field B, and, and higher numbers for field C. Microbial biomass at pre-side rest time separated field A, that was very responsive, from fields B and C, where we did not get much of a response. At harvest, all the fields had similar levels, no difference between manure. No manure it was sort of equalized at harvest time. So when we put all of these three together, we see for each of, of the fields, like let's take field B, we go from low numbers at planting, higher numbers at pre with nitrogen time, and much higher numbers at harvest. Field A stayed low uh, and then had higher numbers at harvest. The two things that are really telling for us, and that's the reason why we continued with this, is that the data for pre nitrogen time seemed to help us separate the site that was responsive where we needed extra nitrogen from the sites that didn't need the extra nitrogen. And the results were manure addition in increased our microbial biomass of the soil at planting um, once there was already biomass to start with. And it didn't do that for A and B, but the initial biomass levels were much lower. With these results, um, we basically drew some very preliminary conclusions because it was only three locations. But manure addition seemed most effective in enhancing microbial biomass for a field with the longest manure application history. The sampling at side rest time seemed to give us most useful information in terms of making nitrogen side rest decisions. And this was all intriguing enough to say in 2024, we're going to sample all nine of the trunks. That work is currently ongoing. Um, the crew is, uh, is, is working on the last fields that were sampled at harvest. Um, so we will have more, more data uh, to add to this database as we move forward. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been an exciting project to, to see unfold, see what, uh, what we can do with those type of indicators.